Next generation weather forecast of Joe Shockey here from patreon.com slash stormchaserjs. Today's video will be out on YouTube since I'm not making any forecast tracks, but today will be more of an overview of what is to come. And we have a very busy two to four week period coming up as we wrap up the Atlantic hurricane season. And the season here in the Atlantic Basin goes to November 30th. So we've got another five weeks or so of official hurricane season left, but we could always get development during the off season, which goes from December 1st to May 31st. And more of that off season development happens in May, but we can get storms in December and January, which we've seen in previous years, particularly the month of January. I believe we've seen two or three uh, develop in the Northern Atlantic. And you'll see that in the end of today's presentation. So we're taking a look here at the Madden-Julian Oscillation, we are in phase five, and we'll be actually slowing down and pretty much meandering around in phase five, possibly getting into phase six. And again, these yellow lines are the spaghetti, the ensemble, but overall, we're going to be closer to the null phase than phase six, in my opinion. And these purple and red line here is where we have been. But you can see definitely the slowing in phase five once we got to mid-October. And that's going to continue, I think, right to early November. That phase five borderline six no phase appearance. So that's what the MJO looks like. Now, phase five of the MJO favors development here in the Central Atlantic, which is where we have Epsilon going out. However, it does not favor the Gulf of Mexico here in phase four, five, six, and seven. However, there is going to be some pretty strong upward motion. There's a lot of cold air getting involved, and the upper level pattern will support it, despite the MJO trying to fight it off. And the threat of also going into the null phase supports development in the Gulf of Mexico, Caribbean. So this is going to be a contradiction, this MJO, if this develops, but again, given the upward motion pattern, the cold air and the upper level 500 millibar pattern, this is more than likely going to be a problem next week in the Gulf of Mexico, which is key. But anyway, there's the MJL teleconnections. You can see again, phase five worked very nicely with Epsilon as that heads out and becomes a big storm south of Greenland and Iceland early next week and impacts parts of Ireland and Europe next week. And again, there's Epsilon there. And here's the feature in the Caribbean that's going to drift northward into the Gulf of Mexico and likely be a problem early next week. I think it may even be a named storm. I mean, possibly by tomorrow or Sunday. This thing is really getting its act together. You can see already up to a 50% chance from the National Hurricane Center. It's got a really good appearance to it. If you can see it right there in the cloud shot, you compare Epsilon to this, and this looks pretty good. Given that it's over, you know, 85, 86 degree water. I forgot to put on the SST temperatures, but I do have the anomalies, and you'll see that that the energy is quite there in the ocean to support this development. So quickly, here's Epsilon heading out. Again, going to be a major storm middle of next week, south of Greenland, Iceland, and bring impacts to the UK. You can see what that looks like there. This became a major. I believe it's the fourth major of the season. But again, maintaining hurricane status as it heads out east of Bermuda and southeast of Canada. Now, moving on to the upward motion pattern for this upcoming week. You can see the upward motion here in the Caribbean, in the Gulf of Mexico, the enhanced rainfall, the ridge over troubled water. <laughs> That's the song from Joe Pistardi. He likes to sing, but again, there's that upper level ridge at 500 millibars helping to ventilate the Caribbean and southern Gulf of Mexico. So that's a good pattern for this upcoming week. Week two, very, very strong upper motion over the entire basin of the Atlantic. But you can see, again, where the enhanced rainfall is, is going to be in the Caribbean and along the East Coast. And again, there's that ridge over troubled water. And another one that from Joe Bastardi is, the JMA took my baby away. The JMA took my baby away. And one of the last these things that started to come back to me because Joe loves to use these JMAs. And the last thing he usually says is, you're not going to find that on the Weather Channel. You're not going to have Jim Cantore saying, the JMA 
took my baby away or rich over troubled water. <laughs> That's not going to find that on TV, but you'll find it from Joe Bastardi's site, Weatherbell, and and that's pretty much it. But again, no question about this pattern, that that ridge over troubled water look will help favor things as we end the month of October and go into November. Now, the European ensembles, this is the weeklies you can see here. Let me go back and make sure I got these correct here. Okay, so this is from the extended. Okay, so let me make sure that I put these in order. This is a new format for me. Okay, so here's four, uh, here it is. You can see over here, uh, Days 1 through 7, and then uh, 5 through 11, and you can see what it looks like there. You can see the enhancement there in the Gulf of Mexico. And then along the East Coast, get days 19 to 25 and towards, you know, days 26 to 32. But overall, you can see what the enhancement there looks like. That's pretty impressive. So that's what it looks like there. And then moving on over here to the accumulated cyclone energy, the forecasted ACE. This is days... 5 through 11, you can see we average roughly about one ace point. We're going to get 1.3. That's from Epsilon going out and that feature developing in the Caribbean. Days 12 to 18, uh, that's a pretty impressive signal to have it, that 2.1 versus 1. So there'll be that system and maybe even another one developing after that as we get into the month of November. But again, pretty impressive looking here in the Northern Hemisphere, uh, despite the time of the year that it is when you have these kind of anomalies showing up like this. So you can see what it looks like there. Here are the ensembles from Weather Nerds. So they get, there goes Epsilon heading out. And there are the ensembles seeing that feature in the Caribbean coming north within the Gulf of Mexico next week. And again, possibly something else here, uh, north to South America to, in the longer term, probably day nine through 11, another feature may be lurking around down here. And we'll see what happens with that in the longer term. And then, of course, the ocean temperatures look like this. Very, very warm. There's your classic La Nina look, which is a La Nina, but that's what it looks like there on the SST novel. You, see, you can see the Atlantic Basin are quite warm, so there's plenty of fuel to carry this right through late November, in my opinion. So very, very warm. Now, with all that looked at over the next several weeks, favorable conditions in the Caribbean, and, of course, storms that develop in the middle of nowhere or head out into the middle of nowhere, there'll be favorable conditions, and, of course, the main development region is shut down this time of the year. But again, this weekend, look out in the Caribbean for likely, I think it's going to be named Zeta. That's the next name in here in the Greek alphabet, Zeta, here in the Caribbean. And again, that propagates north into the Gulf of Mexico as we head into early next week. So that is it for now, and thank you for watching.